Now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hook up. Get ready for more of the best fishing information and the hottest tips on improving your angling skills. Let's Talk Hook Up is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hook Up. Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. And by Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. And now, Southern California's sports fishing voice, the hosts of Let's Talk Hook Up, Pete Gray and Rock God Rick Maxa. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's talk hook up coming your way on the Mighty 1090. Man, are we having a good show for you today. If you didn't catch the first half, make sure you get it on our archives because it has been a great one. We have Chef Yanni from Fisherman's Belly in the studio. Corey and I hanging out, talking fishing. And boy, I know we're learning a ton, and I hope you are too. As you heard from Pete in the first hour, he's uh, up in Alaska right now, finishing up our Whaler's Cove trip and beautiful Angoon, Alaska. They had an absolutely phenomenal trip up there. Can't wait to see more of the photos. And if you're not on all of our social media accounts, boy, I sure encourage you to do so. Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, they're all very easily linked from our Let's Talk Hookup website at letstalkhookup.com in the type right hand, top right-hand corner. You can see the little icons. And the reason I mention is Pete's done such a great job every day of kind of updating us on how that Let's Talk Hookup trip won. We got to see pictures of those giant lingcod that he's been talking about and the limits of halibut and some really, really good information. Info and it's been a lot of fun, and Corey and I are having uh, fun hanging out with you this morning and talking fishing and talking fun. And talking nothing but good times right <laughs> here with, uh, with the man, Yanni. You got it. Well, the phone lines are certainly packed up. Everybody's excited to talk to Yanni and get their questions answered, but before we do that, we're going to jump into the catch report and find out what's biting out there. Today, your fish doc fishdope.com report is sponsored by the good people at Dana Landing on Mission Bay. It's your one-stop shop for everything that you need to go fishing. They have a complete saltwater tackle shop. They offer a full deli. They do Mexican and California licenses. They have trips and six-pack charters. And when it comes to freshwater tackle, check out one of Corey and I's favorites, and that's East County Bait and Tackle. They're full of all the great freshwater tackle and live bait that you need for a great day at the lake. Dana Landing is right across from SeaWorld next to the Dana Lawn Tramp in Mission Bay. And East County Bait and Tackle, they're at the end of the 67 Freeway at Maple View and Lakeside. Check DanaLanding.com. We're going to start our catch report all the way up with our private boater buddy, Captain Mark Wish of Pacific Edge on the line. What's up, Mark? Hey, good morning, Ricky, Corey, Yanni. What a fantastic show you guys got going on there this morning. Dude, oh, having, thank you, thank you. We're having oh, way too man, I'm going to have to go back and listen to that first hour on the archives because I was working on my notes. I couldn't pay attention. But holy cow, there's a lot going on uh, with, with cows, as a matter of fact. <laughs> a pretty interesting week offshore, good opportunity, some very important changes underway also. First off, a little bit of squid showed back up again at Catalina, backside middle. Didn't make a whole lot of difference for fishing Catalina proper, but uh, it seems like that yellow has moved on for the most part. But for the guys headed out to the Cortez and the Tanner Banks, it's a real game changer for the yellows and bluefin out there on the banks and uh, also for the big bluefins hanging out at San Clemente. And then speaking of San Clemente Island, now that inshore sector is still much the same, you know, bass, few yellows here and there, nothing really all that exciting. But just outside the island, oh, boy. It has been a fantastic week on the bigger bluefin tunas. Lots of 200-pound-plus fish, mostly flat falls in the dark and slow troll live flying fish daytime. And I just got a report from my buddy, the world-famous Dan Burns, has called me here with a little bit of info. They bit good in the dark last night for some of the guys. And my buddies on the, the Fandango right now are pulling on a good one. Good luck to you guys there. But it's been some crazy stuff seen at Comandy. I mean, in addition to what's caught, there was a massive school of straight cows jumping around chasing bait in 20 fathoms of water on the backside. And my friend Billy Cade's got it all on video, so watch for his website there. He's going to have some spectacular video of them big fish jumping around in crazy shallow water. It's hard to figure. Um, in other news, that local Dorado bite took a major uptick here this, this week. It's much closer to home. You know, they've been around for a while. We've been seeing them, but they just haven't been biting all that much. Well, for whatever reason, they decided to bite. But uh, just right off Oceanside, five miles off San Onofre, out to the 267, there were some kelps there around the bank there that were biting. The rich blow Catalina has been biting, and even up in the channel a little bit out in front of Avalon has been biting. Fish every little piece of kelp that you see, guy. It might have some nice Dorados on it. And um, for you guys fishing the Horseshoe Kelp area, you know, it's been staggeringly slow this year for a while. 
Uh, it looked like some good great yellows moved into there. Maybe the Catalina fish, I don't know. But uh, they saw quite a bit of yellow. They started biting a little bit. That outside middle area <clears throat> has been uh, the best area on that. Hopefully that holds up. And for our exotic of the week, and I don't have specific details. I just saw the report uh, yesterday on Bloody Dex. Uh, guy supposedly caught an albacore right off the east end of Sacramento Island. He's got a beautiful picture of what I think was an albacore. It's been so long on. since I've seen one. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's a beautiful picture, and the report sounds worthy, and I can't see any reason why they would make it up. But yeah, uh, yeah, and, and I think which, I think it's the real deal. He's just out in there hanging out with a bluefin. Which you know, I mean, we haven't seen one in several years, but you know, in the years previous to that, when there weren't quote unquote albacore seasons, there's usually a single or, or one or two that get caught. So how cool that that. Uh, just what a cool thing to see when that thing coming up to color, those big old wings uh, you know, sliding out there. That's pretty cool, oh, Mark. Man, they're the best, man, and they are so tasty. Oh, the yeah. best. <laughs> no doubt about that. Well, some great info, Mark, a great report. I mean, from, from cows to albacore, I mean, I don't know that it gets much more complete than that, but a, a, a great report. And, you know, the beauty of what you do, you know, keeping up on tabs like that is reported to Danny and vice versa. I know Danny shares all that great information with fishdope.com and, it's a great way to keep in touch, whether it's on cows or on albacore, and you can save 20 bucks with a new membership to fishdope.com by using the code HOOKUPNOW. Again, HOOKUPNOW, all lowercase, no space. It saves you 20 bucks. And Mark, can't begin to thank you enough. Another fantastic report for all the things you do. If somebody wants to keep in touch with you, what's going on at Pacific Edge, and all the great info, best bait tanks in the world, how do we find you? Oh, Ricky, we're in uh, Huntington Beach. We're on the corner of Bolsa Chica and Edinger by that big Chevron station. Phone number at the store is 714-840-4262, the website PacificEdgePackle.com. And, yeah, this was an interesting report, and I'm <laughs> yeah, looking forward to what we're going to have for next week. <laughs> we're already looking forward to it, buddy. Great job, Mark. Appreciate that. We'll talk to you next week. You got it. We'll see you guys. All right. Now let's head all the way up north back to Whaler's Cove because Captain John's got the week's fish report on the line. What's up, John? Well, good morning. I know you've heard from Pete and his amazing catch of these giant ling cods, but I want to talk about how that all occurred. We've got a captain that found this uncharted reef where nobody's fished, so he started fishing it, and with Pete and the rest of the guys on his boat, they wanted to target some ling cod, so they were able to really explore that over the last four days, and it's just amazing. But something else, all of our boats have Ray Marine um, units in there, and they're set to record as we're going over it. And then at the end of the season, all of our chips are sent into Navionics, and Navionics then updates all of the charts. So each year we find areas that we had no clue about, and then we're able to go and target and fish these new areas. How cool is that? Yeah, since our area is such a huge area with over 500 square miles and virtually wilderness, Every year we find new spots to target, and this was one of them. And this has world-class, you can't find them bigger than than this, you know, a 50-inch lingcod. That is world-class, and that's right here. We didn't even know it was there until this year. So it's, it's really cool to be able to do that. That's awesome. Awesome. And, and boy, just the reports from Pete sounded like it was a great week of fishing, John. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the coho fishing slowed down a little bit yesterday just because it's been so hot, and we got a little bit of rain, and and these fish are moving through, but still, um, I got half my limit yesterday, but they were huge. And with four guys on the boat, we caught 100 pounds of fillets. Nice. You know, I mean, and that's that's not not getting a limit. I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous sometimes, but we're still doing really well. We've got great weather today. It's sunny, and it's going to be 10 knots. And this is very typical of our area. That's a a microclimate. We only get 37 inches of rain a year, which means you don't have to wear that rain slicker. And people come up here from SoCal and have all these warm clothes, and they're peeling them off and saying, I thought I was going to Alaska. (laughs) Well, in reality, you better bring your sunscreen. You better bring some short-sleeve shirts, maybe a pair of shorts, because 
it gets hot up here, especially in our little piece of the world. That's awesome, John. Well, Pete gave us the rundown of what fantastic fishing and mentioned how busy that our trip for next year is already filling up August 13th through the 17th because there's so much repeat and then people jumping on board. If somebody wants to take advantage of one of the single spots or double spots that might be left for this season or better yet, getting your space for next year because it's filling up so fast, how do we find you guys at Whaler's Cove? Well, you can call us at one 800 Four two three three one two three. That's one eight hundred four two three three one two three. And check out our webpage, WhalersCoveLodge.com. That's WhalersCoveLodge.com. Check us out on YouTube and Facebook. And yes, we are booking already for 2019 and 20. 19 is booking fast. As I walked in here to do this report. A couple of guys were already booking for Let's Talk Hookup. So it's going quick if you want to get in on the action and come up with all your buddies from SoCal. You better make that phone call or you're going to be waiting until 2020 or 21. Great call, John. Appreciate it. Great report as always. We look forward to another one next week. All right. We'll talk to you later. All right. Thanks, buddy. Hey, from the busy schedule at uh, Whalers Cove Lodge to a busy schedule with Marcos at Seaford Sport Fishing. How are you doing this morning, Marcos? Good morning, Corey. Good morning, Rick. I almost had Pete there. How you guys doing this morning? <laughs> We're great, Marcos. Good morning. I know that, yeah, you guys have had your hands full with this crazy fishing going on. Uh, yeah, there's been a little bit of fish caught. You know, it's a little unexpected for August there, but pretty good fishing. The half days, actually yesterday, you see forth in the morning, 46 yellowtail on the half day trip there, Ooh. along with 50 bonita, a handful of bass, a little bit of other stuff there. A little slower in the afternoon, 8 yellowtail, 6 bonita, and 31 calico bass. So that was Definitely some of the better fishing we see on the half day. It's been a little slower version of that through most of the week there. A little bit of yelltail, a little bit of you know, lots of calico bass. So very good fishing on the half days there. The full day fishing out the island, San Diego yesterday, 148 yelltail to go with 18 bonita and 6 calico bass. And they actually had one bluefin on there, so nice mix of fish on there. They will got on their 6-pack charter at 7 Dorado and 9 Skipjack, so lots of variety on those half days and full days. The overnights catching Dorado, Yellowfin, Skipjack, occasional Yelltail in there. So this is really what we expected this time of the year. The water's warm. The weather's nice. And on top of that, don't forget, guys, you can't wait till last second this time of year to make reservations. Give yourself as much time as you can. Did I check the website, seaforthlanding.com? Have our full schedule up there for those half days, full days, overnights, day and a half, longer trips. You can make your reservations directly online there. You can always give us a call down here at the office, 619-224-3383. There's some person, say hi, pick up some tackle in the tackle shop there, load up on those MC swim baits because that's all the yellow tail are being caught on. <laughs> and then maybe stop and have a rock out of Rick breakfast for you at the restaurant before you head out on a trip. Sounds like a solid morning to me, Marcos. you got it planned out just right. Absolutely. You know, I love seeing you guys down here. love getting you guys out fishing, but it is busy. You do need a passport if you're going on those full-day trips. Just things to take into account. Make sure you have your gear set up, make some reservations, and get out there fishing. Awesome, brother. Great job, Marcos. We appreciate a great report. Appreciate you keeping us up to date. One more time, shoot us the phone number if somebody wants to call you and make a great reservation. 619-224-3383 if you want to call. Seaforthlanding.com if you want to go online. Of course, you can come down to Mission Bay visit us in person. Awesome, Marcos. Great job. Appreciate that. Talk to you next week. All right, Rick Jensen from Sport Fishing Financials up next on the line. What's up, Rick? Hey, Rick. Hey, Corey. Hey, Yanni. How you guys doing? We're doing hey, Rick. Great. How you doing? Anxious to get that northern Baja section of the report in there. Some really good fishing this time of year in Baja. Yeah, and Yanni, you're speaking my language. I'm a grocery fisherman. I'm going <laughs> to tip and let people know that they need to clarify their butter when they're grilling. Uh. I'll get started. With the report here, Bob Hoyt down to Mag Bay Outfitters reports that the Dorado, Tuna, and Wahoo fishing is all going well. Seeing some marlin around from now till the end of the year, it's the time to get down there. So look Bob up for any of your uh, fishing and lodging needs there in the bay at Mag Bay Outfitters. Up at La Bocana, the whole central coast, from there to Asuncion, the yellowtail really turned on. Uh, up at Asuncion, you can also mix in some big calicos and some white fish on the bottom. Sheep had have been there. Down at La Bocana, uh, the Corvina, Grouper, and uh, Pompano, everything's biting on the near shore. So Central Coast has really turned on, strong fishing there. Cedros, we heard from Jeff. He said that Jeff at Cedros Island kayaking, he said the yellow tail bite was doing well in the south end. Calicos on plastics in the deeper water to 40 feet. 
smaller halibut on white plastics on the beaches, and uh, they haven't seen any tuna or dorado yet, but the water is all the way up to 78 degrees, so they expect that may be happening here soon. Over at Bay of L.A., Dorado is a focus, lots of Dorado around, and people excited about running out and getting those. Yellowtail are still there, but uh, I'm sure it's nice and warm and, and uh, plenty of chance to get on boats there, so Bay of L.A. still going strong there. San Quentin, fair to good fishing for yellowtail and barracuda. Good calico and bigger sand bass around. Bottom fishing still steady with the big lings. A uh, few guys have started to run offshore, but it's been hit and miss outside. And then up at Ensenada, uh, yellowtail, barracuda, and bottom fishing continues steady. Not seeing the white sea bass that we saw there a few weeks ago, and uh, more and more boats are starting to run offshore. The outside taking a look for uh, yellowfin and dorado and having some success on the patties there. So. That's what's happening awesome. in Baja. Well, very complete report, Rick. We appreciate that. I know Pete mentioned that you are, uh, you guys are going to get together, head up north, and go have some fun up in Alaska there. And if somebody wants to keep in touch with Sport Fishing Financial, have you give them a hand with their finances so they can do the same thing, have plenty of time to go fish Baja or fish Alaska and have some extra money left over. What's the best way to reach you? Yeah, sure, Rick. Thanks. You can find us at our website, sportfishingfinancial.com, or always give us a call at 949-481-1807. Awesome. Great job. Great report. We appreciate that, and we'll talk to you next week. Take care, guys. All right, Rick. All right, Rick. Th- thanks a lot for that. Hey, I want to remind you, too, Bill Varney has come out with a very cool new gadget for catching sand crab. It's called the Crab and Go, and if you're a surf fisherman, it's a, it's a must-have piece of gear. It's a lightweight stainless tube with a handle that works like magic to help you catch sand crabs for surf bait. It's made of stainless steel. It weighs less than 15 ounces, and with just a scoop, you can catch clean and fresh sand crabs. Ask for Crab and Go at your favorite tackle store or order it online at Surf Fish Tackle. Dot com. And that catch report was sponsored by Blue Guard Innovations, making smart bilge pump switches and sensors designed to protect you, your vessel, and the environment. The BG-1 oil and fuel detector could help you save thousands of dollars in fines by detecting oil in your bilge and turning your pump off before you dump it into the water. Just one of several switches and sensors made by Blue Guard Innovations. Check BlueBGI.com for more information. Corey, let's jump back into the phone. Let's do it, Rick. And they've been packed the entire show. They all want to talk to Yanni. We're going to talk to Rich. Rich is calling from Bradley. Good morning. Welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up, Rich. Hey, Rich. Hey, Corey. Hey, Rick. And uh, Yanni. Uh, Good morning, Rich. Yeah, that was a great report from Pete the first part of the show. I still daydreaming about that uh, 60-pound monster he, oh. he whaled on. No doubt. 60-pound <laughs> link. And uh, speaking of the uh, going to Alaska, that sounds like a great way to beat the heat. You and, know, Rich, that's... And with uh, the heat around here, I've been barbecuing uh, probably four to five days a week. And we learned that uh, when we when we barbecue beef, we want to let it rest so that it reabsorbs the juices. And I've always wondered if you want to do the same thing for uh, for big chunks of fish. Uh, Good question. Uh, absolutely. That yeah, that is a great question. Absolutely. Well, thank you. <laughs> so you know the the negative of letting your your meat rest, and that's why you know so many people don't even know about that little secret, is that you know it cools off, and people are used to eating their meats or their fish hot. But what they don't realize is that when you let your meat rest like that, all the molecules start to settle down, and that liquid, that wonderful juicy liquid that's within that protein, whether it's steak or even a big fat piece of meat, of of fish, it lets them simmer down and rest so that when you cut that piece of meat or a fish, all that juice doesn't come running out, and you're going to end up with a dry piece of meat, even though you've cooked it perfectly. So the same principle applies for big cuts of fish. Absolutely. What would you say is an appropriate time for it to be resting? You know, if you can touch it and it's somewhat close to room temperature, then and your your finger doesn't feel hot, then you're fine. Okay. You're ready to go. And uh, when you pull it off the grill, whether it be fish or a steak, do you just leave it on an open plate? Do you cover it with aluminum foil? Do you put a lid on it? What's the best? Uh, is there anything that will help promote it, make it better, or is yeah, it just as absolutely. long as it's resting, it's all good? That's even a, a better question. So I always, always based my, my meat coming off the grill, okay. okay, because I assume that that meat is a little uh, too, too well done, okay? I just assume that. And one of the ways that you overcome over, uh, overcooking your fish or your meats is basting. That reintroduces flavor to it. So no matter what I'm cooking, pork, chicken, fish, I'm constantly basting it as it's on the grill. And then I make enough baste 
to put it in a small Tupperware container, and I'll literally take that fillet, that fish, and I'll put it into that Tupperware and let it bathe in the baste, mm -hmm. and then I put it on the platter, and then I pour my baste over that. So while that piece of meat, that piece of fish is nice and hot, it's, it'll readily absorb that base, that liquid base. And by the way, my base is always two to one, two parts acid, one part oil. Your acid can be lemon, lime, it could be grapefruit juice, it could be tomato juice, or it could be just straight vinegar. Two parts acid, one part oil on the base. What's the reason for that, Yanni? What's the reason for what? Well, what you're describing, the, the two to one ratio. Oh, okay. So... Marinades and bastes, okay? I'll just talk briefly about those. So marinating is a way of pumping flavor into the fish. Basting is a way of keeping that fish nice and moist and re-energizing with more flavor. When you, when you marinate fish, you want to go opposite. You want to go two parts oil, one part acid. Because, as we all know, when you immerse fish in acid... It's like making ceviche. Yeah, it's going to start cooking it. It's, it'll start cooking it, and it'll start toughening it up. So it's one thing to marinate a piece of lamb overnight, but if you're marinating fish, you only want to do it for two or three hours maximum because that acid is going to start eating away and toughening up the fish. The opposite applies on basting. You want two parts of acid, one part of oil. Interesting. Yeah. And that way, and that what acid really does is it brightens up all those flavors. It accentuates the flavors. It's kind of like salt. It sharpens all those flavors, and it introduces moisture. And along with any spices that you want to add into your base. I'll, I'll tell you something I discovered, and, and, and Rick, I think you did too, with Fishman's Processing, Sean having those uh, spices. Yeah. Killer. And Yanni, I don't know if you've tried them, but they're incredible. They... They're, they're not salt, okay? It's all spice, and it's great for, for chicken and meat, and, and it's so fabulous for fish. It's everything you're describing in a, in a rub that Sean has at Liberty Station at, at Fisherman's Market there. It's packing, packing on flavor. And not only flavor, but, gentlemen, spices are medicinal. They are so good for our health. Unbelievable for your skin, for your organs. Spices are the key to long life. So start enjoying spices. Start feeling free. Go to Sean's and, and buy his prepackaged spices. Any spice are good for flavor and for your overall health. I dig it. Absolutely. Hey, when we come back, we got more Let's Talk hookup, including seeing a live version of an upcoming recipe that you're going to do. Yanni, you're going to do a little chefing it up uh, as we speak on the air live, putting one of your upcoming recipes uh, together right in front of our face I'm, and live I'm on the air. So excited. Yeah, I can't wait. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk hookup coming your way on the Mighty 1090. Hey, this is Jeff from Sajos Kayak Fishing. Year one was a huge success for us down at the island, and we are already having very good fishing for our trips in 2018. Our fleet of Hobie kayaks are fully dialed in. Our beautiful secluded compound has all the creature comforts that will make you feel right at home. My warm, friendly staff will take care of all your needs while you are with us, and I will personally guide you at all my favorite spots around this majestic island. Pack light as we are washing clothes every day, and our fully stocked tackle shop has everything you need to ensure a great time at the island. Our biggest upgrade this year was to our Menu. With the addition of our beautiful Traeger Grill, we are enjoying some fabulous lunch and dinner meals, as well as smoking lots of fish for you to bring home and enjoy weeks after your trip returns. Come join me for your next trip to Sajos Island for fishing or just exploring. Visit our website at www.sajoskayakfishing.com or just give me a call at 760-412-2507. I'll make sure you have all the info you need for a successful trip to Sajos Island. There is an undisclosed paradise waiting for you in your own backyard. It's the La Mision Hotel in beautiful Loreto, Baja, California. Experience one of the few towns that has truly kept the spirit of old Baja, combined with the luxury of a five-star hotel. Old mission traditions, authentic lifestyle, and a wealth of Mexican culture still lives at the La Mision Hotel, situated on the water and just steps from the harbor. Take advantage of the fantastic fishing and natural beauty of the Sea of Cortez and the islands of Loreto. Loreto has long been known as the Dorado capital of the world, but huge tuna, wahoo, 
blue, marlin, yellowtail, and pargo are abundant too. La Mision Hotel can set up affordable fishing trips, dive packages, and family fun adventures to enjoy the rich natural abundance of Loreto. La Mision also has a fantastic spa, fine dining at Los Olivos Restaurant, and the famous pizza grill will amaze and stimulate your palate. Relax, fish, and enjoy the beauty and adventure of Loreto at the La Mision Hotel. Fishing and other very affordable packages are available. Once you go, you're hooked. Check LaMissionLoreto.com for details. La Mission, the beauty and fun of Loreto is waiting for you. When you put on a pair of Maui Gym sunglasses, the world begins to look different. Colors are more vivid. Contrast is clearer. Details are crisper. Wherever your vision leads you, beauty follows. With polarized lenses that eliminate glare and enhance color, Maui Gym sunglasses won't change the world. They'll change the way you see it. Color. Clarity. Detail. Maui Gym. I always wear a life jacket when I'm on the water because I'm lazy. I like floating like a giant turtle covered with SPF 50. The life jacket does the work. I highly recommend this to everyone. Save the ones you love. A message from California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways. XFRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. San Diego Sports Leader. The home of ESPN Radio. The mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. Hey, welcome back. So used to, <laughs> so, you know, I'm so used to being on Corey's side than the other that I, you know, I, uh, I, I was in cruise control there. I'm sorry, we're having step, such step a good time, Corey. Rick. No, yeah, no okay. doubt, man. Having a great time. Hey, want to remind you a cool thing? If all of you out there have bought, purchased your sport fishing calendar, which benefits CCA, that. Great calendar that Bill Varney done so much work putting together. On the back of the calendar, as you registered your number, there's a winning number and a drawing every month for guys that win all kinds of cool prize pack. This week, a guy is going to win a great pack of, of, uh, of baits to fish uh, calico bass and yellowtail and rockfish and a really cool opportunity um, for a, a, lucky, uh, a lucky winner at the end of a, um, at the back of your calendar. If your winning number is 2858. So, again, scope out your calendar. If you have the number 2858 and you register, it on the CCA website. You are the big winner of a great prize pack of baits, and congratulations to that winner there. And okay, so Yanni, you, as we always say, do such a good job of coming up with recipes that are easy to do, they're quick to do, and this upcoming recipe this week is no exception. Another fabulous dish, but it's something that is is so quote unquote easy that you're able to put it together while we're here on the show. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's a panzanella salad and grilled yellowfin belly. Oh. So, <laughs> so the salad all by itself is world class. Okay. It's, and it was actually invented by the Greeks, and those Italians ripped it off from us, and they, modified, <laughs> they tweaked it, they modified it, and lo and behold, they actually did a better job. But it's so simple, it, it, and it took me 30 years to figure this salad out. It's nothing more than tomatoes, cucumbers, and onions. And this time of year, I grow heirloom tomatoes, but this time of year, you guys may not have your own garden or, or your neighbor's garden, but go out to a farmer's uh, market and go get heirloom tomatoes and enjoy the real taste of tomatoes. So in this salad, by cutting tomatoes and then putting salt on the tomatoes, all the juices from the tomatoes run out. So whenever we make this salad, we cut up our tomatoes, our onions, and our cucumbers, and that's it, and salt, and we let it sit for 10 minutes. And then we add our olive oil, okay? And then that actually makes a vinaigrette. The olive oil mixes with the tomato juice that's okay. come out because of the salt. Which has a low acid. Yeah, it's not that acidic, but it's still acidic. Yes, it still right. gives you that little bit of acid. So that's the Greek salad. And then on a Greek dinner table, all the kids around with their pieces of bread are fighting for the bottom of the bowl <laughs> to enjoy yeah, the I can see the juice the at the bottom of the bowl. You've already got all cut these up. juices, all right? So what the Italians have done is rather than having everyone with a piece of bread ready to fight for the salad, they actually cut up day-old bread, all right, and then they add that into the salad. So what I've done with this recipe is, because I don't think any of us have day-old bread, we all eat our bread, (laughs) what I've done is I've taken a piece of uh, sourdough bread and I turned it into croutons merely by toasting it to give it that old uh, dried flavor, and then by putting it in a frying pan with some olive oil, salt, pepper, and a touch of oregano. So I brought the salad, which I salted this morning before I walked into the studio. I've got my bread, and now I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm actually preparing this for the guys here at the studio. So I've got my breadcrumbs. I'm going to add my breadcrumbs into this salad, 
And remember, there's no olive oil yet. Now, the Italians add olive oil and a little bit of red wine vinegar. So I've created my olive oil and my red wine vinegar, and I'm going to add that. So the thing, too, with the salad, too, is it's not just, you know, this isn't a this isn't an iceberg pile with some ranch on it. You know, your salad is your fresh cut heirloom tomatoes. It's your uh, onions. You said as well, right. cucumber. Right. And that's that is your that and, is your salad. And the salad dressing is the juice from the tomatoes okay. and the olive oil. Okay. And believe me, that is so golden. You ask any Greek, and they will recall that from their childhood, and they'll come running for this salad. <laughs> and like I said, the Italians have created this salad. But, and all they've done is they've added the bread into the salad already, so you don't have to do that. You now, don't have to. This this will be available for you guys to watch. But I, I just I got to describe how easy this is. You've got you've got your bowl with those ingredients that you mentioned. You dump your breadcrumbs right into uh, you uh, breadcrumbs. Your your basically croutons, croutons. That you made as you said from uh, right. toasting um, your uh, sourdough and a little bit of olive oil in a pan. Mix it up with your olive oil, and that's the the base of your uh, of your salad. That's correct. And so healthy too. Huh? Oh, you you guys are just going to die. And and then I grilled my yellowfin belly, okay, okay, on the grill. And what I did was I marinated it a little bit with some oil. I did grill it with the skin on, and I didn't put any salt on the skin because if you add salt to the skin, water comes out of that skin. If you put it on the grill, it'll steam it, it'll make it rubbery, and it'll stick to the grill. So whenever you guys are cooking fish that's got skin on it, never put salt on it. Just oil it up. After it's cooked, then take and put your salt on top of so it. So even if you yeah. put the salt on the meat? You can put the salt on the meat. And it'll work. It'll work. It'll, absolutely. But okay. avoid putting salt on the skin. So if you're going to grill a whole fish, or if you're going to grill a filet with skin on it, yeah. you can put the salt on the meat but not on the skin. I'm learning so yeah. much here. And, and, and th- that's happened to me, and I didn't know why. Right? Oh, yeah. No, you got to clean your grill. you know, you got to oil your grill. But you can't put any salt on the skin. Otherwise, it'll turn rubbery, and it'll be a mess, and it'll stick to your grill. It's just a nightmare. So yellowfin belly, you marinated it. You grilled it last night. I grilled it last night. I took it off the grill, and while it was warm, I re-doused it with some extra virgin olive oil. I put it in Tupperware, and I put it in the refrigerator to get it nice and cold. So it stayed in the refrigerator overnight. You don't have to keep it overnight. Just you want to cool it down because you want everything in your salad to be nice and cold. So now I'm going to take these chunks of yellowfin tuna and throw them on top of this panzanella salad. And I'm going to garnish it with some basil. And that's just a very Italian thing to do. And we and keep the skin, this, the, the, you, you grilled it, like you, as you mentioned, skin on. You keep the skin on through the process. The skin is something that you want to eat because now you've got killer flavor to it. Absolutely. Yeah, you don't, you're, not, you're not peeling this off or anything like right. that. Right. And, 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 and here's another thing that the skin did for me. So I had a filet. It was, I don't know, probably about a 5 by 7 filet of yellowfin tuna. All right. And I cut it up into cross hatches. So that when it was done cooking, I could just follow the crosshatch marks and, and cut up my little servings because I made one by one chunks of it. So that's another thing that the skin can do. You can cut crosshatches in your fillet, but if you've got skin on the other side, the whole fillet still stays together. Ah, oh, okay, okay, sure, right? sure, sure. And then sure. when it's done cooking, then you just follow the crosshatches and use your knife and you cut up your chunks. He's of giving up all his secrets, Rick. <laughs> yeah, I love Yanni, it. That's what Yanni does. And the smell in here is that's incredible. Great. <laughs> it's really good. So, so I've added the croutons. I've added the fish. I put some fresh basil. And by the way, if you guys aren't into gardening, you got to get into gardening. I mean, I'm in, we're enjoying these fresh vegetables, and I'm hoping that these guys – will comment on these fresh vegetables. And now I'm going to serve up some of this panzanella Italian salad with yellow fin belly. Oh, man. And there goes some to Rick. Oh, and here's some to for Corey. Are you kidding me? Pete's missing this show? Yeah, no, that was uh, – this this Pete, I think Corey and I both are very uh, are very happy that you chose to you chose to take one off. Well, I'm going to go for a quick one. And we're going to have some for Adam. And, and it's so easy to do, Yanni. That's the incredible thing. <laughs> that is you know? so good. Take a I, um, bite here. I'll tell you what surprised me is um, is the tuna from the day before, you know, being cooked like that. I didn't know, you know, I'm no, no expectations, but it is just it's just fantastic. And I watched you put this together in minutes, and and seems like something that you could do. Seems like something you could do on the go. You could maybe take it to a tailgate. I mean, you had all of your recipes put together. You could bring this to somebody's house and prepare it for them very easy, mom or dad, you know, that kind of thing. Absolutely. It uh, seems like a good one on the go. And It is so flavor I, I, I really <laughs> wish everybody here could, could get on this. This is no blowing smoke for Yanni. This is absolutely 
Fantastic, buddy. Yanni really is so good. healthy. Yeah, that's really good. Oh, yeah. It's no, so I, healthy. That's what's saying. You know, I, I'm, I'm tasting these flavors. It's awesome. And it is so simple. It's cucumber, tomatoes. Red onion. Onion. onion some and, basil. And, 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 and fish. And the fish. And, yeah, and, and, you know, I didn't overcook the fish, but I didn't leave it raw. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't sear it so that it was raw. I cooked it just so that it became all opaque. And then I immersed it in olive oil and put it in the refrigerator and just let it become. It should be nice and silky smooth and creamy. I just think that this is such a cool, obviously, clearly not a, you know, again, somebody with a skill set like my own could pull this off very easily. And what a cool thing to get to provide to somebody and something that you can relatively easily put together, you know, in a, you know, you can you can chop up all your ingredients ahead of time, put things together and, and make it happen. And know that in the Mediterranean, they're eating this very dish right now. Ah. That's, you know, it's so good. Fish it's salads so are, uh, you know, so common in the mess. And you know, here's a great thing about this particular salad is, you, let's say you grill up a bunch of fish with no intention of doing this, but you've got leftover fish in the go. grill the yeah. night before, right? Sure. Wow. So now you can use your leftover fish, put together a salad, and put that fish on top of that salad. The next day meal. Yeah. yeah. And you're on the shores of France. You're in Greece. You're, you're in, killing yeah. Me. You're in Israel. That's how we eat in the med. I like it's your really style, so buddy. Yeah, 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 it's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and this recipe, uh, I'll put it up on our website uh, later on tonight, and I'll call up the radio program tomorrow morning, and I'll talk about it, and you guys can have access to it starting tomorrow morning. Great job, Yanni. Awesome, awesome. Well, the phones are packed. Everybody's so excited to talk to Yanni. And I'm excited to take a phone call because it means I get to eat a couple more bites of this killer salad. Corey, let's jump back into the phone. Let's do it. And, man, we have so many so many callers and so many good questions. And I, I think Tom from Temecula has an excellent one. Good morning, Tom. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Morning, guys. Morning, Tom? Yanni. Uh, hey, Tom. Yanni, um, I will, I'm uh, questioning how to best cook collars. I have a couple of big uh, bluefin tuna collars that Ooh. I that I caught uh, this year, and I vacuum sealed them. I put them in the freezer. I'm trying to figure out what to do with them. And then um, with the bellies, the tuna was you know sizable, and I usually I smoke my bellies. And what I ended up doing was um, cutting them across and basically making steaks and throwing those on the grill. And those turned out quite well. Uh, is is that an option for doing the bellies that way? Is uh, your comments? That so- that sounds like a wonderful option. You know, you, you talked about smoking bellies. That's so common. The reason that people smoke bellies and they turn out so well is because they're just full of fat. Okay. And fat, you know, people don't understand it, but what fat really does, and it, and it works in our body the same way, we need a lot of fat in our diet. Fat captures ingredients that our cells need. It captures spices. It captures all kinds of flavors that distributes it through our own bodies. But when we eat fat, any spice that you've put on your meat, We'll go into that fat, and we all love chicken fat, we all love beef fat, we all love fish fat. So that cut of meat is full of fat, and that's why it's so flavorful. But you, as you figured out, you don't have to smoke it all the time. You can simply put it on the grill, and it's hard to overcook it because that fat is constantly giving it moisture. So, yeah, that's an excellent, excellent choice. Did that answer your question? And the collars? And the collars, yeah, I was think, thinking about it. Okay, those collars are gold. You can just ship them to me, and then I'll, can, I'll, I'll send them to I'll send you exactly what. No. Okay, so the collars, I've got an excellent recipe on yellowtail collars that you can use for those bluefin collars. I'm telling you, collars are meant to be eaten like fried chicken. You use both hands to eat them. Yeah. You grab the bones. You deal with the bones, all the little chunky little bones. But what's the collars are going to be full of not only fat but collagen, and collagen is what makes your tongue stick to the roof of your mouth. So, by simply marinating those collars, and I use my formula of two to one, two parts oil, one part acid, and you can add whatever kind of spices you want. If I'm into cooking Latin food, I'll use Latin spices. If I'm cooking a Mediterranean dish, I'll use Mediterranean spices. If I'm cooking a Southwestern dish, I'll use Southwestern American spices, you know, cumin, black pepper, so on and so forth. But at marinade... For those collars for a couple of hours, two parts oil, one part acid, and your spices. And then while they're on the grill, and remember, on the skin, don't put any salt. 
You can marinate your, if you've got salt in your marinade, marinate the flesh, but only oil the skin. That way you'll get this beautiful, crispy, golden skin with marinated meat and baste it while it's on the grill, constantly baste. And believe me, once you enjoy collars with two hands and it's crispy and full of flavors, collars are the way to go. You'll never let a deckhand throw another collar <laughs> off the boat, well, and I that's, promise you. Yanni, that's the reason why Sean at Fisherman's Processing has created such a huge business and following. He knows exactly what you're talking about. And and you get, Rick, I mean, you can order your collars, and, and it's not even a part of ordering. It's a part of your processing. Yeah, and like you said, it's one of the best parts of your fish. You know, they... they uh, the bellies. Yeah, they, they do the collar for you, broken, you know... Butterfly. Yeah, exactly. Butterflies perfectly all cleaned out nice. And, and then I, I think that one of the... See, you nailed it as it, once you enjoy it, you realize what a, what a killer piece of meat that is. But I think some people, clearly not Tom, but some people don't know how to deal with with that you know i mean it's not like you said it's not a fillet it's not a perfect piece of meat and once you uh once you have that collar there is no going back and uh you're, you're right he does a great job of butterfly and vacuum packing so it's like okay well i can i can handle this a little bit of seasoning like you say your marinade and, and away you go and and uh there's something fun about the caveman style of you know you grabbing a hold of it especially if you I really like yellowtail collars, and it's a fun thing to have a party and everybody over. And you, there's there is no other way to eat it than just get in, get in, and get after it. You know the Chinese, and bless their hearts, there's billions of them. The Chinese will tell you the first part of the fish that you eat is the head because the head is where all the flavor and the fat is. Okay, and the collars are obviously attached to the head, so they know what they're talking yeah. about. Collars are incredible. I, you know, even any any fish that has a collar, and all of them do. They're edible, and they're absolutely delicious. And all those fins and all that meat, by the way, that's within the collar, that's a pain in the butt to a lot of us. But what we really don't realize is when we cook fish that's got the bones still in it, those bones are giving off moisture and flavor back into the meat as it's cooking. So cook those collars, because all those, that collagen, those bones, that's all getting flavor into the meat and into your mouth. And you talk about the fattiness, and, and, and our fatty fish locally are like rockfish and... Our yellowtails? Yellowtails, with, with, yes. with the tuna crabs they've been eating are yes. full of fat. And that's the reason why at Guadalupe, for some reason, Rick, they're so darn good eating. They're so fatty and just yes. so different, and, man, it's just... It, it, this whole recipe and you talking, it gets me so fired <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, totally. Well, we've been talking a lot about grilling. Let's continue that going. we got Brian from Wildemar up next on Let's Talk Hookup. What's up, Brian? What's up, guys? Um, are you guys going to sell tickets to next year's show with Yoni? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brian, how are you? <laughs> it's really, Brian, it's a really good one. That's a good idea. <laughs> I'm good, Yoni. How you doing? Good, um, good. Okay, you kind of covered it with the salt on the skin, but I was talking about, um, I was wondering about fish sticking on the grill. Okay. You know, you put your nice piece of fish on the grill, and then when you go to flip it over, it's already starting to come up flake and come apart, and you can never get that good flip. So I was wondering, do you recommend, like, those gold grill mats or the fish basket? Like, what's your best technique on? Uh, you know what? Good I, question. I, yeah, that is a good question. I've seen the gold mats, and uh, I've never used one. The fish baskets I've used a couple of times. <clears throat> Excuse me. But here's what I do. And, I, and I've got an old dilapidated grill that I just hate to get rid of, you know. The thing is, I just I clean my grill. As soon as I'm done cooking that day, I'll get my steel brush out and I'll clean my grill. And then right before I start to cook, I always clean my grill. And then I always put lots of oil on that skin before I put it on the grill. And then before I put the fish on the grill, I'll wipe the grill with a paper towel that's got some vegetable oil on it. So not only is the grill spotless and clean, but I oil it right before I put the fish on, and I oil that fish right before I put it on the grill, and then you shouldn't have any problems, and whether then, it's your, your skin not sticking or the meat not sticking. And, and like you're talking about, Yanni, the basting as you're continuing to grill, before you flip it, if you baste it again, and it, it, it'll keep everything from sticking. Well, hopefully, yeah, it. absolutely. But here's another thing, too, that, that we have to realize, is that you can't try and flip that piece of meat too early. Because the more that fish cooks, the proteins, the muscle of the fish will constrict. 
And when they constrict, they'll actually pull themselves away from the grill, and you'll know, the fish will tell you when it's time to cook. That's why I always love to grill with super high temperature so that I can get that process to happen as quick as possible without overcooking the fish so it can flip. That's that's good info. We got about uh, 30 seconds. Want to sneak one more in there, Corey? Let's do it, and we're going to talk to uh, Mike. Mike's calling from uh, Rosemead. Good morning. Welcome to Let's Talk Cook Up, Mike. Mike, you got a quick one for us? Hey, Mike. Well, uh, you know, it's too short, but uh, you know what? I can smell the food <laughs> that you prep coming through my phone. Uh, uh, thanks, know, Mike. I swear to God, I can. Anyway, Thank you, Mike. Uh, that's it. It's too short a time, so uh, appreciate all the tips you're giving me. Well, Mike, what's your question, and maybe I'll answer it in a little bit. Yeah, it's okay, Mike. Go ahead. Uh, oh, give me your take on clams and mussels. I love putting it in the pasta sauce. Ooh. Oh. oh, yeah. Hey, listen, clams and mussels in the pasta sauce are one thing, but learn how to stuff your clams and mussels. As soon as that the clam and mussel goes into your pan and starts to crack open, that's when you put a tablespoon of some flavored rice and stuff it right into that opening. Then you put the lid back on that pot and let it finish cooking with that rice in there. That's how I ate clams and mussels. Oh, oh my God. With man. rice man. and All tomato. I, Corey, am not ready for this one to end. It's <laughs> <laughs> been such a great time. Such a great time for sure. Yeah, I Thanks know. for the call. Oh, man, such good stuff from Yanni and this whole thing, Rick. And when we come back, we're going to not only take a couple more calls, we're going to find out more from Yanni, but somebody is going to be winning the Anza Filet Knife so perfectly fit for today's show. And we'll be right back, and let's hot cook up on the Mighty 1090. Follow the rest. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971 is right in your neighborhood. Now 19 stores and more to come throughout Southern California. No one does it better. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find a location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. Have you been looking for a live bait hook that keeps live bait alive? Look no further than Japan's leading fish hook, Gamakatsu. It's the little things that make the difference, and Gamakatsu hooks drive the point home. With an absolute perfect bend and ideal barbs, your bait swims harder and longer. And when you get bit, Gamakatsu hooks bite back with a vengeance. All hooks are not the same. Go with Gamakatsu for infinite success. Gamakatsu, simply the best. Check Gamakatsu.com. The Yamaha Outboard Summer Power Sales Event is here. Until the end of August, eligible new select 90 to 200 horsepower four-cylinder four-strokes include two free years of Yamaha extended service. And eligible new 2.5 to 75 horsepower four-strokes include up to $500 in dealer credit. Reliability starts here. Yamaha. Visit your local Yamaha Outboards dealer today. Offer ends August 31, 2018. Subject to change at any time. Other restrictions and conditions apply. See authorized participating Yamaha outboard dealers for details. This promotion cannot be used with any other Yamaha offer. Quality is the name of the game at Seaforth Sport Fishing in Mission Bay. Free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, plus a great fleet. It's no wonder Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, El Gato Dos, Pride, Tribute, Tomahawk, Prowler, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth, Sea Watch, and San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing. For charters or regular open party schedule, check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. In 1971, Seaguar invented fluorocarbon fishing line. This game changer brought fish catching advantages to anglers everywhere with less visibility underwater, better knot and tensile strength, and superior abrasion resistance. Today, Seaguar is the number one brand of fluorocarbon because of its proven performance. So no matter the fishing conditions, you can count on the Seaguar family of fluorocarbon leader material. Fluoro Premier, the original blue label and the stealthy pink label to help you catch more fish. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on Mighty 1090. And, man, uh, just was such a fun show. It's amazing how quick two hours go, Rick and Crazy. Yanni and... And your lovely wife, Maria, shoe chef Maria, we should call her, right? Oh, wow, exactly. Yeah. Well, today's show, uh, Rich from Bradley is the, uh, the winner of the Anza Filet Knife, so perfectly fit for today's show, handmade in San Diego County by uh, craftsmen and, 
I mean, how do you not support a local yeah. guy, Rick? You're stoked on that one, Rich. They are a really good knife, and uh, I, I got one myself. You'll love it. Great knife. And, man, Yanni, I'm with Corey. I cannot believe that two hours could have possibly gone by that fast. But the beauty of what you do at Fisherman'sBelly.com is all of that information that we talk about is all available on your website. It's so well put together. I, I so We talk about it every week on the show, but I so highly encourage everybody to, to jump on your website, Fisherman'sBelly.com, because you not only have the videos, I mean, it's broken down that all of us can see it, find it, the types of fish, the things that you do. Give us, again, the rundown if somebody wants to make this fantastic recipe or any of the great stuff that you do at, at Fisherman's Belly. Well, you know what? There is something that I forgot to mention. Um, in preparation for this show and talking about summertime grilling, I went on my YouTube channel where I've got 130 videos, and I made a playlist just for how to grill fish. So if the listeners want to see a bunch of my recipes that are categorized just for grilling, it's go to my YouTube channel, which is called Fisherman's Belly Channel. Just go to YouTube, and in the search bar, type in Fisherman's Belly Channel. And once you get on my channel, then go to the playlist and click that, and you will see how to grill fish. And I believe I have 18 recipes that are just for grilled fish. And I highly recommend subscribing because you get a notification every time you post a new video. I do it all the time. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know what? I'm closing in on 1,000 subscribers. And if you guys can help me close in on 1,000, that would be great. When you go to my YouTube channel, you can subscribe, and then a little bell icon comes on. Click that bell icon, and you'll get a notification. Yep. And YouTube is the very first place that I put my recipes before I even put them on my website. So you will get first-hand information as hot off the press. Well, let's make that happen. And, Rick, if they miss part of the show today, they can download the app and definitely a must-listen. Yeah, this was a great one. Yanni Marie, you guys did a fantastic job. We can't begin to thank you enough. Thanks for everything you do. We love having all your recipes featured on the Angler's Table section of our website, Let's Talk Cook Up com. And one more time, in addition to getting to hear you on the archive and hear you when you do your weekly updates or bi-weekly updates, Let's Talk Cook Up, how do we find you? You can find me on Fisherman'sBelly.com on my website. My Facebook page is a great place to interact with me. If you have any particular questions about cooking techniques or a fish or you're looking for a different kind of recipe, I always get a ton of questions on my Facebook page. I'm on Instagram. God, that following on Instagram with a bunch of young people, they're crazy. And, and <laughs> I'll tell you what, the millennials are getting into cooking. So that's awesome. And my YouTube channel. Go to my YouTube channel, Fisherman'sBelly.com. Awesome. Great job, Yanni. Appreciate that. Maria, thank you guys so much for sharing, having a good time with us. And, Corey, great show today. Hey, you stay tuned tomorrow. Another great Let's Talk hookup coming your way. Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Royal Star Fisherman's Landing is going to be joining us. We're talking all kinds of fishing. And Corey and I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow right here on the Mighty 1090.